I've been asked how I frost cakes with an acrylic disc. Because you'd like a cake with super sharp edges. This is a tutorial video. Hello, I'm Rox and welcome to my kitchen. If you're new here, my passion is helping you make sweet treats. Intro animation. Because adults need sweet things too. First things first, let's get a few things out of the way. Question one, do I need an acrylic disc to get super sharp edges? I'm also working on a video on how to frost a cake with no acrylic disc. So no, you don't need to use an acrylic disc to frost a cake and get those super sharp edges. It's just a great tool. What if I wanna try this technique but don't have an acrylic disc? You can actually use a cake board. Because I cake decorate so much and I wanted to be mindful of waste, I just went ahead and purchased acrylic discs. What tools do I need to decorate a cake with an acrylic disc? It's helpful to have one acrylic disc, a cake board, plastic wrap, tape, a parchment paper round, angled spatula, a cake slash bench scraper, optional but helpful, a level, and a second cake scraper. Question four, how much buttercream do I need for this technique? To frost one of my five inch or six inch round cakes, you'll need one batch of my Swiss meringue buttercream. I have a video, but I will outline all of the details on rockstarbakes.com. Question five, what type of buttercream works best for this technique? Swiss meringue or Italian meringue buttercream. They both taste really delicious and they're really stable. An American buttercream is a crusting buttercream and is a little bit temperamental when it comes to temperature. Question six, how do I build my cake? I'm going to start with the basics, but if you already know how to build and crumb coat your cake, feel free to follow the timestamps that I've listed below in the description. I don't like when my cake slips around when decorating. Add some buttercream to your cake board to help the cake adhere. I adhere my cooled cake layer. Simple syrup or milk is optional. Fill it with frosting. Amount is a preference, but I find a quarter cup is a great proportion. Spread filling with an angled spatula to smooth it out and make it as even as possible. Swish, swish, swish. Add your second cake layer. Make sure it's even from all sides. Press so it's adhered and press firmly so the cake is secure. Fill the cake again. Make sure all of the spaces are filled in. Add that final layer. To ensure it's as even as possible, I use that level. There's buttercream between each layer and it's not firm yet. So there's still the opportunity to stabilize and make the cake as even as possible by leveling. Press down where you need to make it level. Simple syrup that final layer. Again, this is optional. I always crumb coat to lock in the crumbs and moisture. Spread a thin layer of frosting and then scrape the excess away to crumb coat the cake. As you're crumb coating the cake, you're slowly removing any excess frosting. When you do that, there's crumbs in that frosting. Don't add that frosting back into the main frosting. You wanna keep your outside frosting looking as fresh and speckle-free as possible. It just looks so much more professional. At this point, if you feel you need a more stable cake, you can place it in the refrigerator for 15 to 30 minutes to firm. This will make it a little easier to frost your cake. Question seven. Personally, I really enjoy a cake with really tight frosting. For example, if my cake is five inches, I use a five and a quarter inch cake disc. If my cake is six inches, I use six and a quarter inch. Next, I highly recommend you cover your acrylic disc with saran wrap. How do I cover an acrylic disc with plastic? You just need one, the disc, two, the plastic wrap, and three, tape. Take a square of the saran wrap and cover the disc. Tighten the sides and attach with tape. Question nine, how do I frost my cake with an acrylic disc? So here it is all cold. Add some frosting to the top of your cake, enough to cover it. This will be about a quarter inch thick. Smooth this out with an angled spatula. Add a parchment round. This is a six inch cake, so I use a six inch round. Add acrylic disc covered with plastic wrap. Center the acrylic disc with the tape portion facing the outside of the cake. I find it helpful to use two cake scrapers to help center it. I use a level to get a straight cake. Fill the top edge with frosting. Frost the cake with an angled spatula. Slowly build the frosting. 
Frost, frost, frost. Continue adding buttercream to any holes. Do a rough smooth out of the frosting with a cake scraper. It's kind of tempting to get it perfect at this point, but I highly recommend placing it in the fridge for about half an hour before continuing. There's still time to smooth out the sides once the cake is chilled. While the cake is chilling, I clean up. I realize everyone's fridge is a little bit different. Like my fridge might need a little more time to chill than your fridge. I remove the cake when the frosting feels firm to the touch. But here's the cold cake. I continue removing the frosting. In some cases, I add frosting back to any deeper grooves. But keep removing until you're happy with the cake. Question 10. Why do you cover the acrylic disc with plastic wrap? Here's why. When leveling the acrylic disc, the disc kind of creates a suction. When you push it, it's pretty stuck. However, since the disc is covered with plastic, you can cut out the disc with a knife. Remove the plastic slowly, slide off the disc, remove the parchment round. Question 11, how do I clean my acrylic disc? Per the instruction, mine needs to be washed by hand. If you'd like to see how I use this red maroon cake, I do have a Harry Potter cake that you can check out. Whoa, M, G. Cake frosting success, yay. Hit that bell notification and like to get my latest videos. What's up, thanks for hanging. See you soon. If you'd like to see the video where I use this red maroon cake, here's a Harry Carey.